All right. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm Perrine Perez. I'm an uh, architect at Sci5, and I'm the vice chair of uh, this uh, IOMMU task group. It's a brand new task group. I've prepared this talk uh, with uh, VED, who is also uh, uh, the chair of the task group and the chair of the SOC infrastructure horizontal committee. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, first of all, what is an IOMMU? Uh, why do we need such an, a block in our system? Uh, so I'll describe that going through a few usage models. Uh, I'll describe what we've been working so far on uh, the uh, baseline architecture of the IOMMU. Where do you place it? What are the required data structures? And a little bit about the software interface. And I'll finish up with providing a, a kind of a status and hopefully you will be interested in joining that group. So I don't know why. All right. So. Uh, so you can't see it, but uh, the, the, the title is uh, what is an IOMMU and why do we need it? So first of all, I wanted to go over uh, a non-virtualized system. So IOMMU stands for Memory Management Unit, and it's dedicated for uh, IO devices. So in this example, it's a very simple uh, system chip, chip with uh, a, a RIS-5 core with its own MMU attached to an interconnect and uh, there is just one I.O. device and the system memory. So the, uh, the MMU on the core is there to translate a virtual address into a physical address, and we are using this uh, single stage translation uh, to do so. And by using the page table, we can apply, uh, I'm really not lucky with this thing. <laughs> so, uh, so I just wanted to say that thanks to the MMU, uh, we can uh, perform permission checks and we protect the memory. Uh, when the device driver is programming the DMA capable IO device, uh, in this case, the DMA is programmed with physical address. And of course, in this uh, data flow, there is no check perform on the pass to memory. So there is no protection from a malicious uh, device driver or from a misbehaving uh, I.O. device. So we are trying to uh, resolve that uh, problem by adding an I.O. MMU in between the I.O. device and the system memory. And when the device driver is going to set up the, uh, the DMA in the I.O. device, um, it's going to provide a, a virtual address that the I.O. MMU is going to translate into a physical address. And here, uh, we get some permission checks performed at the IOMMU level uh, that uh, solve the, the, the problem that we were talking about. So the IOMMU provides memory protection. It has also a, a couple of uh, interesting uh, system level uh, uh, functionalities. You can map some uh, contiguous uh, IO virtual address space to an underlying completely frag fragmented physical address space. So you don't have this long list of uh, scattergather that you need to manage at the DMA. And it allows you to uh, embed 32-bit legacy de uh, devices into a very large system which can access uh, address space above the 4 gigabyte region without any uh, bounce buffers. So now maybe we're going to look at uh, the virtualized system. So again, the same system and chip. Here we have a, a RIS-5 core with the hypervisor extension, and uh, we have a couple of guests using uh, guest virtual addresses, and the MMU is going to perform the two-stage translation from guest virtual address to guest physical address using the VS stage uh, page, page tables, and then from the guest physical address to the supervisor uh, physical address using the, the G stage page tables. So the memory is well protected and uh, it provides uh, isolation, memory is isolation from uh, the different guest OS. Now the guest OS, the, the device driver on the guest uh, cannot simply go and program the, the DMA at the IO device. It has to go through the hypervisor and, and any DMA operation has to uh, be mediated by the hypervisor. So this is a, a, a tremendous uh, performance impact. 
So here the solution is to embed uh, an IO MMU in between the IO device and the memory, and we allow the guest, uh, the device driver and the guest, to set up the DMA with a virtual address. The IO MMU will perform all the required translation as if it was an MMU uh, using uh, the, 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 the page tables uh, and the same page table format that are being used by the CPU. So with this uh, system and chip, the guest OS has a direct access to the IO device. The memory uh, is protected thanks to the IO MMU and its uh, address translation and permission checks. Um, the IO VA that is being used by the, by the uh, IO device can be a guest virtual address, which allows virtual address space sharing between an IO device and the, and the guest. Uh, it can be a, a guest physical address if the IO device is, uh, is owned by, by a guest. Uh, you can use directly this uh, guest physical address. If you are in a system where you support a message signaling interrupt, the IO MMU is here as well to, uh, to uh, direct this MSI, this interrupt, directly to the, uh, uh, this, uh, the interrupt file of, of the guest if you are supporting the IMSIC as defined by the advanced interrupt architecture spec. So, uh, now I'm, I'm going to talk more about uh, the uh, actual RIS-5 IOMMU uh, baseline architecture. So the main feature, as you understand, is address translation and uh, memory protection. The RIS-5 IOMMU supports single stage, so it's doing the same translation as the SATP register in the core and also two-stage translation, which is the V-stage and G-stage, which is equivalent to the VSATP and HDATP register in the course. One specificity of the IOMMU is that it, it has to support multiple concurrent devices. I've put an example on the right, uh, where you see the IOMMU connected to a root, and it can have many, many different uh, endpoints attached to it. The IOMMU must be uh, compliant with some standards. One of them, and the most famous one, is the PCI Express standard, which has to support pass ID and ATS, address translation services. Uh, the IOMMU must be compliant to uh, the privilege specifications, the latest one, with all extensions, so the hypervisor extensions, but also the SVPBMT and SVNAPOT. It is also compliant to the AIA spec, which soon to be uh, ratified, uh, because it emphasizes the uh, MSI virtualization. The IOMMU will enforce also uh, some physical memory uh, attribute, and uh, system supporting SVPBNT, it's a page-based memory type, will also uh, be uh, enforced. The IOMMU will also embed uh, optionally some uh, hardware performance uh, monitoring. And uh, we expect uh, the IOMMU to be compatible and to coexist with some uh, mechanism to do uh, uh, memory protection and uh, to isolate uh, M mode resources. One example could be uh, the IOPMP. So, now I'm going to dive a li little bit further into the IOMMU. So the IOMMU is only focusing on address translation. We are not taking care of the data. And we are only also focusing on inbound accesses. So here's the example is you have an IO device. Uh, the IOMMU will get the IO virtual address along with some identification. The IOMMU requires and needs a, a unique identifier of the device so that it can bind this um, uh, device ID and process ID in our case to a context. So uh, if we want to take a, a concrete example of let's, uh, a PCI Express, uh, the device ID would be mapped to the requester ID, which is the bus device and function, and the process ID would be uh, mapped to the pass ID. 
For some other system which, for instance, uh, uh, which uh, don't support uh, uh, PCI Express, it can be anything which is uh, implementation defined. What really matters is that that ID must be unique for that I.O. The context information consists of uh, the, the paging scheme, the page address of the page table, and also a, a software context ID. That software context ID, it's really useful for software to bind a, an ID with a translation rule that allows the sharing of resources and reduce uh, the waste of the IOTLB. So once the request comes in to the IOMME with that ID, the first thing is to look for the context. If it's local, we go and to the next step, with, which is to go through the TLB. It's also co called an IO address translation cache uh, to find the, the physical address. Uh, and basically, the, the job of the IOMU is almost done, doing the permission checks, and, and that's it. If there is a miss of any of these two structures, there are <clears throat> uh, context directory uh, work or page table work because all this uh, structure are stored in system memory. I'll go over uh, the data structure now. <clears throat> so you got it, the unique hardware device ID is up to 24 bit to accommodate the segment ID and the 16 bit of uh, requester ID for PCI Express. This is the largest one. And process ID is up to 20 bits, again, to fit the longest pass ID. On the software context ID identification, uh, there is a GSC ID up to 16 bit. It's here to identify the VM, right? It's very close to the VM ID, but at the system level. And the PSC ID up to 20 bit is to identify the process within the device or within the, the VM. The context information consists of two tables, the device directory and the process directory. The device directory is meant to be uh, managed by the host. It's a, it's a multi-level uh, multi uh, hierarchical table. So if we have uh, uh, the, the full device ID range, it's going to be up to three levels, but it can be two level or one level, depending on the, depending on the system. And when we get to the device ID context, we get this 64-byte uh, uh, information. So it's, we want it to be very close to uh, the MMU of a core. So we have this IOHTATP register, which is similar to the HTTP in the core, and that provides the G-stage uh, translation rule, right? The, the PPN for the page table, the paging scheme, and uh, this uh, GSAD, which is the VMID. If, if this uh, device has a process ID, then the next uh, entry in this uh, device context provides uh, the pointer to the process directory. That process directory, we want it to be in the control of the guest. So it will manage this table uh, by its own. Again, depending on the width of the process ID, you can have three, two, or one level of uh, process ID uh, directory. And we finally reach to a process context, which is an IO SATP or IO VSATP, depending on the cases, and that gives you the first stage uh, translation rule, right, uh, S stage or VS stage. On the software interface, uh, besides, of course, the register uh, interface and all the memory uh, base structure, we've talked about the device and process uh, directories, and of course the page table. Uh, software requires some other uh, interface, and it's going to be implemented using circular buffer queues. So first one is a command queue. Uh, we need that because many information can be cached locally in the IOMMU. So uh, software is going to be the producer of commands, such as uh, invalidate or uh, fence to synchronize software with the IOMU. And the IOMU will be the consumer. It will process them and complete uh, the, the, the commands. There is also a fault queue. Uh, 
errors can, can happen in uh, in the IOMU, and it can be completely it will be completely asynchronous to uh, to the CPU, and many faults can happen simultaneously. So we have this uh, queue system. Uh, so in this case, the IOMU is the producer, and the, and software will read the fault uh, event and uh, handle the, the, the report. Finally, there is this uh, page request queue. So this is useful only for uh, devices which supports address translation services. And the function is for an endpoint device to request the presence of, uh, of a page. So this is completely defined by the PCI Express uh, ATS PRI protocol. So the, in this case, the IOMU is the producer and software is uh, the consumer. So I'll finish up with uh, providing some, um, some uh, status of the IOMU task group. So it's a fairly new group. It has been created early uh, December 2021. Uh, we've received uh, four uh, different IOMMU specification. So many, uh, many uh, companies were working on that subject. Uh, we've spent uh, a few months working together uh, to deliver, uh, actually, uh, last month, the first uh, draft version of the specification. Uh, it's the baseline, and this is, uh, it is uh, what I've presented to you today. Uh, we hope to ratify this uh, architecture by the end of the year, and to do so, uh, we need a, a proof of concept, and the QMU uh, and the Linux driver are being developed uh, as we speak, and we hope to complete that effort uh, by uh, August timeframe. So, if, of course, if you want to join and to contribute, uh, it's, uh, it would be really helpful and appreciated. Uh, moving forward, uh, we have uh, a few, some, some enhancements that we know we are going to uh, need to do. Uh, one of them is uh, the hardware acceleration and uh, for virtualization of the IO, IOMMU. So, there are some ideas over there to, to, to uh, improve this, uh, this uh, virtualization of the IOMU. Confidential computing, uh, we, uh, we, we, we depend on the confidential, confidential uh, task group to add this feature on the IOMU. Quality of service, I believe there is a, a, a task group that is going to be created uh, as part of the SOC infrastructure uh, horizontal committee. So these are at least uh, three ideas of uh, where we can uh, improve the IOMU. But the main message here is really to try to uh, gather feedback on this specification that you can, you can find over here. And, uh, and also if you uh, want to join and contribute it, uh, that would be uh, really appreciated. Thank you. Any questions, maybe? <laughs>